Welcome everybody to another amazing episode of Wellness Warriors. Today I've got a wonderful guest, actually Marcus Frudenman, is that correct? <laughs> Frudenman? Uh, so Marcus, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when I started sharing my healing journey back in uh, 2012, and I was doing a lot of research, you know, you came up and at the time you had a, um, your website was called something else and then it, it got shut down because it was about healing cancer, curing cancer. <laughs> and so I've been following you ever since we've met at different conferences, but um, Marcus is basically a producer of the documentary Cancer is Curable Now. And um, you started all of this journey because of a um, personal situation. So let's start off with that. I always like to ask, you know, what is the pain point that led to this passion that you're in this mission that you're on? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Like you said, we know each other since such a long time and uh, on a similar journey. For us, it started with a friend. Um, I have slides behind me for those of you who can see. Um, Jeanette was diagnosed with uh, cancer and was dragged into the system and she had very bad detox pathways so um, she died from the chemotherapy and I was at that stage so emotionally involved and angry at the doctor because he just ignored all those signs and I was actually kicked out of the hospital and we did so much research and looked for treatments and everything. And, and I was in such a motion. It was like a locomotive in motion that what didn't want to be stopped. And um, that's when we started to put everything together. Unfortunately, Jeanette died from the side effects of the chemotherapy way earlier than, than um, the diagnosed. So it was, it was a shocking time. It was a emotional time but it gave our whole family like a massive um journey so we we started out my wife is naturopath so she focused on the aspects of you know natural health and diet and lifestyle and supplementation and all of those things and natural uh, and 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 good treatments and i was responsible for all those you know hippie cures as i call them today I, I carried and ordered everything that was on the market and brought that home so that Jeanette would try it out. GC Math and La Etril and this and Kernel Seeds. And so we were like full on in, in that. I was in that field. I'm not a medical professional. I'm, you know, an architect by trade and uh, interior designer. So it was for me, I was really focusing on all the things that we shouldn't have, but needed. And it was frustrating because no matter what we did, it didn't work. And for, I had recently a workshop and we had 200 people in the room and I said, uh, let's just go through and, and, and check out with all of you guys what you all did and, and what you all bought uh, with that hope that you would have a solution. And it was really shocking, like pretty much the whole audience, it was a cancer audience, put up their hands with all the different treatments and they said, well, I don't really know if it worked. My cancer is still there and maybe a little bit, but not really. And there was no one in the room who had those results that are advertised. And that's how we felt too. And it was kind of scary when you, when you run, you know, through all that promise and always that going up and then uh, didn't work either. So we came to that conclusion. And I think that's the first website that you found. It was Max Awareness. And everybody called me Max. I didn't like that. So that's why we had to change. But Maximum Awareness was that idea behind it so that we are aware of the toxins and everything. So we went on a journey and traveled around the world. It was actually my dream for many, many years to pack up my family, put them into you know, a journey plan and then travel the world. And we used the subject of that time, cancer, as a research project. So we, well, four years with four kids and my wife um, traveling from one cancer center, from one cancer clinic, retreat, detox retreat, research center to the next. And um, we did in total, I think, 16 countries. It was very insightful, extremely educational, but also it rattled my cage because it, it 
changed our perception and our understanding of cancer quite dramatically. That's amazing. I love that, that you did that as a family and you literally, as you mentioned, traveled the world to see what was working and what was not working. Yeah. And it's not so much, see, the biggest problem that you will probably find yourself if it works for one, it doesn't need to work for everyone else. And that's where the real problem is. Why do some treatments work? And I never forget, for those of you who want to watch the documentary, it's for free, um, just trulyheal.com forward slash DRV. We put a package together where you can see everything and, and um, all, all the gifts uh, from the documentary uh, to the slideshow, everything you can light it down. For those of you who just listen audio, and I usually do that because it's a lot of information that we unpack. Um, when, you, when you meet so many doctors, and it was, I think it was 165, um, 40 made it into the documentary, but we learned from all of them. And there was a few nuggets of gold, as I call them. You know, there are, there are those treasures that afterwards make up a completely different understanding. And one of them was that no matter how you uh, mop up the floor and it's a, it's a broken pipe on the ceiling, the water splashes down and you can impregnate the floor. You can buy special mops and special uh, sponges and a bigger bucket. And you can do that as long as you don't fix the pipe, you'll never be finished. And at a certain stage, you'll have bigger damage and the floor is, is breaking down. So that's the principle that we need to address when we deal with cancer. And I found that to be the biggest truth that, that came through. If we do not remove the driving force, that which drives the disease, it's not going away. And for those of you who are elderly <laughs> like me, it's... It's kind of, you realize everything gets worse. You, your tolerance level doesn't hold anymore. All those things that you tolerated easily at a younger age, they diminish. And with cancer and with all of those diseases, it's very similar. Once you have a driver in your body, you can't tolerate it anymore and it gets worse and worse. And that's why that fixing that broken pipe is really one of the key things. Getting to that root cause, right? We know that cancer is just a symptom. It's not yeah. a cause. Yeah. So Tony Berry from the movie Cancer um, uh, Australia, he, he had melanoma, very bad. His whole legs were full and he made the movie uh, One Answer to Cancer. And it was really sweet. He explained how you put on that black self and how you pull the mushroom out and how painful it was. And he did 65 of those treatments and it was always an ordeal and when i met him he told me about the treatments and said marcus i've discovered something as long as i don't change the milieu they keep growing and it's a bit like mushrooms in the forest they keep growing in a certain place where the milieu is perfect their ground is acidic there's not too much sunshine they have the right nutrients that help them grow and he said, if you want to stop those mushrooms, you need to change the soil, cut up some branches so that sunshine comes through, get some oxygen into the soil, put some um, minerals on the soil so that the milieu changes and they stop growing. And that's pretty much what he discovered at a late stage. And you can see he had his leg amputated and was in a very bad condition. And that's when the disease stopped. So even in, in situations like that, it's really crucial. So what is the cause? <laughs> this is where it's really, really complicated. I'll show you a mind map in a few moments that shows that, but it was, my screen is getting darker and darker. Do you realize that? Do you still see something? Yeah. Oh yeah. I see it. See it well. Okay. It appears to me like it's getting darker and darker. All right. Uh, finding that root cause is pretty much a main mission and you know, deficiencies are real key. A lot of people are totally deficient. I never forget, Burton Goldberg said it so nice. We live in the land of plenty, yet we're starving to death. Yeah. And at the moment when he said it, I was like, that's really weird. But he was speaking about all the 
you know, deficiencies that we have from lack of nutrient, lack of minerals, the way we eat, the diets we eat, uh, inflammation as the, well, it's already a secondary factor from many other things, but it's also a root cause, gut problems, hormones, toxins, infections, you know, organ weakness, which is a thing many people don't, don't address. We all think we work at 100%, all of us, but we are born with weaknesses, with impairments, with DNA impairments. So it's really crucial to find out where your body has that lack and, and can't work properly and stress. So when we came to the Truly Heal logo, it was really interesting. I was at that stage in Germany and um, Rudolf Steiner from the Anthroposophy, um, the founder of Anthroposophy, he outlined the body in three different ways. One was just the body, mind, and spirit, and he added habits. So it was a four-part body or the 12-part body where he divided different kind of emotions as well. So it was really interesting. And I, I like the four-part body because we all know body, mind, and spirit, what we think, what we feel about our purpose in life and our body. But we live in a state where we have every day routines and habits that we do like going shopping and you go shopping into the supermarket you walk the same aisles you get the same products into your basket and you walk out and it's kind of we have those routines and they are a body in themselves so what we look at lifestyle drinking eating uh, exercising the way we talk with people everything that's in an unconscious routine is addressed in that vital body as well. And that's that was a big adding to our whole journey. Now, one key that really blew me away was I was uh, with Dr. Rao in Switzerland and he explained the concept of, well, no, he said to me, Marcus, if you keep asking stupid questions, we stop the interview. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, wake up, you know, like, uh, what did he just say? And he was very clear. He said, look, if you ask about treatments and what we do for cancer, that's irrelevant. Did you get that now? It's not important. And he was very forceful in his, in, his, in his way of explaining it. And then he said, the biggest problem is I have three breast cancer patients. And he pulled the charts out. And the first one had you know, a combination of really self-loathing, bad diets, uh, no self-respect, not looking after herself. She was in high stress, high inflammation, leaky gut, and uh, stress, abuse, resentment, anger, frustration. So there was a lot of those things. And he checked out the chart. She had good blood values. She had no deficiencies. But it was that, that underlying factor in her case the other lady had a um, viral infection. She had Epstein-Barr virus combined with high load of mercury in her teeth that she had done and pulled out without any, she had cadmium poisoning and infected root canals. He said, that was all that we needed to know. We fixed the teeth, we pulled, cleaned up the jaw, and all of a sudden her treatment really started to respond and her cancers diminished. And the third one had... Um, a lot of deficiencies, vitamin D, selenium, iodine, combined with mold exposure and high um, EMF radiation at her house. So he said, and now you talk about treatments. Well, we already know by the diagnosis, why they have it, what we need to do and what we need to change. And then we can add support, immune support, the right supplementation, some treatments that break down the tumor. But the key is to find out what's wrong. And I guess at that point of the journey, it was the first time that this really sunk in. I, I, we hear it, know it, but somehow I just didn't get it. <laughs> and it was, I think it was his, if you keep asking me stupid questions, we'll stop. That really rattled my cage and, and woke me up. <laughs> Well, we can see absolutely and, and this is one of the things that I talk about all the time with the seven essential system is that it's not just the one thing we're all individuals we all have different emotional backgrounds you know physical needs emotional needs gut problems you know all of that is so different and so each of those issues have to be addressed and like you say in the slide there investigate the patient not the disease 
you know, women yeah. with breast cancer um, are, are women first and foremost, you know, with their people, they're human beings, they're not the cancer, they're not the diagnosis. And this is so important to differentiate. Yeah. Now, there is one slide, and I just mentioned it very short. Um, for those of you who want, the slides are to download. Um, but one thing that I never thought was, was that relevant, he was talking about different metals in the mouth. And mm -hmm. if you look at some of the charts of most patients, you know, having a gold tooth and a palladium or a mercury filling somewhere, and the galvanic reaction between those teeth corroding the lower quality, there was like so interesting factors and what we started was to add all of those into a mind map and you can see that mind map i was you know i need structure i'm a bit ocd so i was putting all my mind maps first it was those flower power mind maps hippie mind maps as my kids called it and then they because they were so full and so many bubbles that opened up that we started to structure it differently and i guess that's where when you evaluate or work with a cancer patient, how important it is to not miss out on, on particular things. You know, just a sink and just that one thing, a sink deficiency can be so detrimental because the immune system can't properly work. Uh, the cell DNA repair, all of those things don't work properly. So there's little things that make a massive difference. We know that vitamin D3 deficiencies so, and, and that's in all different areas. And that's why I found it so significant by putting that part together and putting the mind map together, we really started to learn that disease can come from so many different areas. It's not just the diet. It's not just those toxins. It's the combination of all of those. And the home environment, and I guess you've noticed that too, you know, we spend $40,000 going to an organic, all healthy, all beautiful clinic, and then patients get well, the tumor starts to shrink, everything is perfect, and then they come home, and everything gets worse again. Well, it's the environment, it's, it's probably the same habits, it's the stress factors at home, but there can be also mold, EMF, uh, a radiation tower, you know, things around that that make it really significant. So cleaning up at home, going through the pantry, going through your uh, cosmetic cabinet uh, is, is really important. And I guess the part that motivated me in that whole process most was it's not a short process. It's not something you do and then it's done. It's a lifetime change. It's a lifetime journey. And therefore you know, plan your resource as well and focus on um, how you can make everything work in the long run. Over the past, it's now 20 years in total. So last 10 years, uh, significantly, I've been working with a lot of clients. And what you realize is we put so much effort in in the beginning, but nobody thinks about, you know, how to continue. And if you go into a clinic, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars easily gone. Now we're talking about US, so 30,000, 40,000 uh, with a three week treatment twice a year or at least once every year. That's a significant cost, and a lot of people can't afford that. And same with us, we couldn't afford it. So, what we started was to recreate everything at home and make a, a, a home clinic or a home healing environment. Mm -hmm that actually allowed us to have those treatments that they use in the clinics, but do them at home. And that was a really, really wonderful journey. So um, Dr. Rao was actually the first one that took uh, the equipment into the clinic and trained patients while they were there and taught them how to use it so that they went home and did not go clinic up and get healthy and then go sick when they come home. They were actually holding that level or that level or even improved uh, dramatically while they were at home. And that's what we started to teach and to educate people about. And that's why I think we've been such a strong presence on the market because a lot of people follow that and, and set up home clinics and home treatments to support their health.
I love I love that, and it's funny, you know, your slide with it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I mean, I use that all the time. I remind our clients, this is not short term. This is this is you know lifelong going forward, and the idea of setting up. Um, you know, various therapies that you can do at home. I mean, I've been an advocate of that from the very beginning because that's what I did. You know, I yeah. did set up everything that I needed to take care of myself at home as much as I could. Yeah. Well, it, it saves you so much money. We, we think, you know, like if I buy an ozone bundle, it's $1,400 to $1,200. That's an expense. But when you think about $180 or $200 per treatment, and you need to do that for the next five, six years, well, then it's a bargain. The same, um, look, we, we focused on treatments that have consistent results. And I, I have that advantage because we work with so many doctors. I always ask, which of the treatments that you do is mandatory? You wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, stop using it even if it was illegal. And that was a question that was quite, quite uh, revealing because hypothermia, fever therapy, and I'm sure in America, a lot of people are not really familiar with it. Fever is one of the biggest immune boosters there is, and it doubles your white blood cell count. It's actually used in university clinics to increase your, your blood values. I'll go through in a moment. Um, I have, by the way, here a nice little chart that shows all the different treatments on how they are related to different um, you know, problems. So if you have toxicity, which toxins are removed by which treatment? Hypothermia does all, heavy metals, xenoestrogens, you know, all the different um, uh, petrochemicals, chemicals, pesticides, all of that. So it's a very powerful treatment for detox. Some German clinics say, we don't need anything else. As long as we do sauna and hypothermia, we are fine. And that's true. So if you have a high level of petrochemicals, then ozone breaks that down. That's why they use it to clean industrial sludge. So there's always different things. And we've pointed that out in the map to showcase which treatments really have the most significant results. And this chart behind me is probably the most <laughs> revealing, you know, you have uh, PMF, which is a very beautiful treatment. I call it the recharge station, like your toothbrush you put into that little stand in the same way you put yourself onto a PMF and it just recharges your system significantly. And that's beautiful because healing requires a lot of energy. And we know that if you have a flu, oh God, now think about it. you have cancer. It's, it's a massive drag. It steals energy. So building up more energy, recharging your system, increasing cell membrane potential is really crucial. And it's what I call the couch potato. It's the least effort on the effort scale, but it has a lot of results, but not as many results as if you go to the other side, hypothermia, which is a massive effort. It's not an easy treatment. But therefore, if you see the results that come from it, what it actually does, it's superior. So what all the doctors said, hypothermia is a treatment they won't miss out on. Simple and easy. It's, it's mandatory every, for every patient. And the second treatment that they do not miss out, and that was, um, you know, with ozone, there is a little bit of controversy and, and a lot of pharmaceuticals fighting against it. So some clinics were insecure and stopped it for a certain time. And Dr. Herzog explained it. He said, Marcus, we stopped ozone therapy with our patients because of legal um, situation. And within a matter of two months, we decided to put it back on and don't care. Because, and rather have a weaver and have uh, patients sign forms because our success rate was very steady for years. And all of a sudden we had that big down turn and you, you could see how patients stopped responding to treatment didn't have the same results and that was the first time i really became aware of that treatment somehow i had ozone treatments and you don't feel anything you don't feel different you don't feel that you just had a treatment so i thought well it's probably not that relevant <laughs> but when he said that and and we observed the effects and i spoke with a lot of patients once they added ozone into their treatment all of a sudden, their whole results 
improved. So these are the main treatments that we teach people, including sauna and supplementation and lifestyle. You know those, they are, they're pretty standard and everybody knows that they're part of the deal. But, um, you know, simple things like alkalining the body. Everybody says eat greens and greens and um, that will alkaline. And that's not true. And there's so many patients, they eat nothing but alkalining foods and they're still highly acidic. And there is a significant factor to, to create alkalinity instead of that lactic acid from the cell metabolism in ATP production. You need oxygen and glucose. Every food that you eat is turned into glucose. So slow conversion or fast conversion, that's the difference where we have to check. But in the end, it's glucose. Now, if you don't have enough oxygen supply to the cell, then you have too much glucose and not enough oxygen, which means the fire doesn't burn hot enough, doesn't produce enough ATP energy. And as soon as you start, and this is really a, a change like day and night, and you can see that with a lot of clients, as soon as they start using ozone, ozone uh, in any form, starts to change your red blood cells into super red blood cells, as I call them. They carry faster oxygen, they absorb it faster and hold on to it, and they release it faster into the tissue. It takes about 80 days to make that conversion. So it's not something you do just in one month, you feel the difference. In two months, you have a complete transformed red blood cell system that absorbs and releases oxygen a lot faster into the tissue. That's why it works for diabetic neuropathy and, and diseases, you know, like where periphery fine capillaries have clogged up. So using that and bringing your oxygen level up, your alkalinity comes up and your acidity goes down. The whole oxygen level in the body works from a far faster. So it's kind of logical. And what he said for them, it was Dr. Dow was the same thing. He said he would never miss out on ozone because it improves all the other treatments by, by factor 10. And so now if I ask you a question about the ozone. So for the average patient who purchases an ozone machine, then um, do they do rectal vaginal insufflation? Do they drink ozonated water? What's, what's your recommendation? Everything. <laughs> the, the, the main treatment that will be replacing or that is complementary to um, major autohemotherapy is the main treatment they do in clinics, which right. means they put a very big needle into your arm then they pull out 60 to 100 milliliters into a little flask and then they swill that with ozone and then they drip it back in. That's called major autohemotherapy. And they do that once a day for the time period or three times a week minimum for the period the patient is in the clinic. Now, when you do at home, you can't really do that. You can, I do, but not everybody is brave enough. It's, it's, kind of a resistance to pick yourself with a needle, then you will do rectal ozone insufflations. There is a, a factor that the, the colon, especially the, the final part of the colon, uh, the rectum, is absorbing all the liquid out of your stool so that you have not constant diarrhea and that you don't, um, you know, drain all the fluids too fast. So in that part, it's directly linked to the portal vein, all the blood vessels, and they go directly to the liver. So when you do an ozone treatment and you go first to the toilet, you have your bowel movement, and then you have your, um, um, your rectal ozone insufflation, only 250 milliliters. It's a small amount. It's a little bag that you blow into your rectum with a little catheter. And from there, the effects happen within 10 seconds. The membrane, your mucous membrane in that area absorbs that oxygen. Your immune system is activated. You upregulate NRF2, which is a very, very important um, um, trigger, healing response trigger in your body. And that then starts a cascade of uh, metabolic events throughout the body that help with your healing. So it's really just a little fart up your butt 
and then you fart that back out and that's it. <laughs> and it's, it's a very simple treatment. It takes you three minutes in the morning. And that, you do that causes, every day? sorry. You do that every day? Yes. That causes the systemic reaction. You, the studies that they have are five days a week. So they all show five days a week for the, um, for the insufflation as a mandatory we do it seven because every time I stop for two days, it's hard to get back going. It, I'm not good with routines. <laughs> so what you do is five days a week, if you like, and um, on a small amount. And then because we have, we have a little bit of a setup. Ozone water, especially for your gum, we use ozone water too with a dental pick to flush out your gum and clean those pockets in your teeth. There is a lot of problems in there that, that already drive a lot of cancers. Mm -hmm. Then we drink a glass of um, ozone water because we have Klebsiella, Pseudonomia, the, um, how do you call them, um, Helicobacter pylori. There's mm -hmm. so many bacteria that we need to reduce and we all have them. They are everywhere. So everybody is infected to one degree or another. So drinking a glass of ozone water completely eliminates those it also helps with SIBO. And then once a day, the rectal insufflation to stimulate. All other treatments like vaginal insufflation, very, very powerful for a purpose. So if you have candida overgrowth, bacteria overgrowth, if you have vaginal dryness, if you have uh, an infection, that's when this is a topical treatment. It's not a systemic treatment. Ear infections, sinus infections, all of those are topical treatments. They don't really drive up your NIF2 levels, but they help with those infections. And that's what we try to achieve, getting rid of inflammation, getting rid of infections, getting rid of bacteria overgrowth. I had a gentleman, you know, serious uh, cancer, and he's, he complained in, in the form that he filled out that his sinus was all um, swollen all the time and that he had sometimes headaches. And when we started to use ozone sinus insufflations, neti pot and with ozone water and ear insufflations, plus rectal for systemic, you have no clue what came out there. It was a week long, even triggered fever and, and, and really sick because of that infection that was released. After six weeks, it was all gone. He felt like fresh born. We didn't do any cancer treatments, but his uh, prostate started to shrink away and, and the infection was gone. And it's that bacteria overgrowth. Think yeah. about you have um, 10 workers and you have three building sites now, if they all work on that sinus, because that's the most critical area and they all need to work here, they ignore the other areas. So if you drain that, you release that infection, all of a sudden those guys have capacity to deal with other jobs. And that's what we discovered. So getting rid of those infections is really, really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we see that a lot with breast cancer and dental issues, you know, bad root canals or just gum disease, you know, women who uh, have breast cancer have a high incidence of inflammatory gum disease as well. So it's, it's always, it's always coming back to what drives it. And mm -hmm. once you do that, now, for those of you who are interested, we had it all on one website and nobody really knew anymore where to go and what to do because it was just one massive website with everything interlinked. So we separated and we started to do the PMF Academy, Ozone Academy and Hypothermia Academy as a separate training site. So when you go to the Ozone Academy, for example, you have all the different attributes on how to use it. First, all the applications, rectal, sinus, ozone, um, water, uh, ozone oil bubbling for lung inhalation if you have lung infections. So all of that is explained in a different chapter. Then we have disease oriented. So when you go and say, I have cancer, then you get a whole rundown on how to use ozone for cancer. If you have EBV or sexually transmitted diseases like uh, papilloma virus, you know, or herpes, then you have a, a section for that, how to use ozone in that regards. And we go into detail 
you know, even males, how to bag the whole testicles and penis in, into a plastic bag and fumigate it, as I call it, with ozone to kill off all bacteria, and then how to do a systemic support. It's all there, and it's all contributed by, by fantastic doctors that we, we work with. And you have the whole setup, how to set up a system and how to create that little home environment, how to make it really practical and, and easy. So if you would like to learn those, they are a link on the, on the page, um, um, trulyheal.com, DRV, and um, you can sign up. Plus we've put a discount coupon for you of anything you buy, whether that's a consultation down to um, any device, you have a 10% discount coupon, which is DRV. So just type in DRV during checkout and it will reduce on everything 10%. That's wonderful. That's a really nice gift. I appreciate that. So trulyheal.com forward slash Dr. V, DRV. And we'll post this in the notes for sure as well. The, the key is you all know that we can't advertise anymore. It's just fact. <laughs> Google doesn't take any advertisement, especially if we mention any form of disease, if we use treatments that are not, you know, supported by or supporting the pharmaceuticals, then it doesn't work either. So it's pretty hard to get around. And that's why um, for those of you who share that information and pass it on to others, that's why we put those pages together. If you go to trulyheal.com, DRV, you will find all the things that you can share with your friends as well. It's an incredible um, setup. And since we do that, we've reached a lot more people because it's, it's necessary to, to get that information out. Absolutely. Because, uh, well, we know, I know my website was, we lost 95% of our traffic a few, years, a few years ago when this all started. So it's uh, word of mouth and referrals and sharing and working with other people like you is, is how the word gets, gets out. Exactly. And let's face it, um, when, see, I'm, I'm probably the most resistant and stubborn patient there is. <laughs> First of all, I try to minimize everything in regards to health related activities, because I enjoy life way too much. I'm mountain climbing, I'm stand up paddle boarding and kayaking. And I don't want to spend the whole morning doing treatments and stuff. So I really figured out what is a treatment package that is tolerable, that allows me to live life, and that makes me feel good, but it's not too time consuming. And when you think about all those treatments, you go to a German clinic, what do they do? They have local and, um, and, and full body hypothermia. They have maybe laser therapy to activate your immune system or directly onto the cancer. They use ozone therapy. And they have IV treatments, you know, like all the supplementation. So if I have a good nutritionist that puts a package together that I vary, not taking the same thing all the time, you get numb to it, but vary. And that's already taking care of all your nutritional and supplementation values. Then you do treatments that are short and have full on effect, like hypothermia. I do that once a week. How cool is that? Once a week, it's a three hour treatment. It's very intense, but I know I save myself. And if I do it every second week, it's fine too, because the effects last that long. And um, I do once a week, twice a week, dependent summer, winter, how much exercise I do, um, a sauna treatment on top, just in the same thing, in the same dome as I do the hypothermia. And that's pretty much it, plus daily ozone. And I can tell you, I feel now 50 times better than I did ever before. <laughs> that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Yes, and it's those things that you can do in your own home at your own pace that really have such a wonderful impact. So I believe, Marcus, that the internet guy just showed up. <laughs> So I think we're gonna lose our internet. Very good, so you get your internet. I would just like to close up my presentation very short with one sentence. Okay. Let's preserve this world. See, I believe cancer, if you look at this slide behind me, you know, it's, it's not because somebody is building a factory, it's because 
we consume and and buy all the crap that they produce it's it's really it's, it's everybody participating if we come back to i would say a minimalistic lifestyle you know not buying everything that's that's presented and and stop that industry from going haywire and abusing the world then we can actually really appreciate and and pass on to our children a different world and a different DNA. Every toxin that we produce and consume alters our DNA that we as a mutagen toxifies or um, uh, poisons the DNA for our children. So they get a worse condition that we already got from our parents. So it's really important that we become conscious. And that's why I love cancer. It's I did actually a workshop loving cancer because it is not something bad. It's a, it's a sign. It's a symptom that shows and waves us pretty big that we need to change. And that's what I believe my main lesson was from all our learning that it's not something to get rid of. It's something to appreciate. I love that. It's a gift and it's a blessing and it's a turning point in our lives if we, if we choose to look at it that way. So thank you so much for all that you do. I know you've devoted many, many years of your life, you and your family, to all this research. Thank you for the, the gift and the discount, and uh, we will be in touch. Thank you, everybody. This is Dr. V signing off. Till next time, sending you a big healing heart hug. Bye for now.